your first time joining us, well, thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Um, we value your time and we wanna make sure that we give you some good tips today. If this is not your first time, thank you again. Um, you know that you can always go to consultblackswan.com slash programs to, to actually view our past programs or anything that we have hosted. We have a slew of different topics. So please feel free to check us out at consultblackswan.com slash programs. Our goal is always to address topics that you will find useful as business professionals. And today is no different. Our topic today is centered around the term of operational excellence, improving the customer experience by using collaborative tools. So the big picture behind this whole theory or concept is really incorporating business tool. By doing that, you will increase your customer satisfaction, which ultimately leads to your bottom line, meaning making a profit. My name is Sidoni Naismith and my company is Black Swan Consulting Inc., which is a management consulting firm that specializes in strategic business planning, financial planning and analysis, and government contracting. So in short, we support small to mid-sized women-owned, minority-owned and veteran-owned enterprises with creating stunning business plans, pitch decks, and ongoing financial forecasting. And we also help you get ready for government contracting. Also in the background today with me is Patrice Wiggin, who is our Black Swan, is on the Black Swan Tech team. And she'll be my right-hand woman helping me to make sure that this webinar goes as smoothly as possible. This program is brought to you by Black Swan Consulting and the MBDA Export Center, which is operated by M. Gillen Associates. Now, Black Swan Consulting is the management consulting firm for Broward County and East Miami that will provide technical assistance to small businesses under the COVID-19 uh, COVID Recovery Initiative. Now, if you've been to my webinars before, you know that I am always interested in finding out we, where you are actually joining us from. So if you don't mind today, please go ahead and let us know where you're joining us from, what county or uh, what if you're out of state. So we have Broward County, we have Miami-Dade, Palm Beach County, Collier, and any other counties or so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. And it looks like 100%, 100% of you, you're in Broward County today. That's great. I am going to end this poll. Wonderful. So on to, now on to our presenter for the day, Aldo Oreco. Aldo is... He has over 12 years of experience in project management and operational excellence. He is a certified project manage, management professional, certified Lean Six Sigma Green Belt. He is a Microsoft partner, smart sheet and cloud solution specialist, and an agile practitioner. I said a lot, it's a lot of tech. Now, Aldo also has a master's in international business and a business administration. He is married with children and he studied and worked in the US, Mexico and Peru. And he is a retired Naval officer. Thank you. He leads with integrity and generates results by empowering people. Please join us in welcoming Aldo Oreco to our program. Aldo, welcome and please take it from here. Hello, hi, thank you very much, Aironi. I'm glad to be here today. I will, I will want to thank uh, our host, Aironi, first to allow this to happen. And I know she worked very hard to, to help uh, small businesses and startups like all of us to, to, to move forward, right? To grow 
every day, and uh, she she really does a great job on that. Um, so our our um, uh, we're gonna talk today about operational excellence. So let me share my presentation now. I think I got it here. So all right. Um, well, Saidoni already gave me a, a great presentation, so we move ahead to the subject. Have you, have you ever been in this kind of situation when you really expect a, a, a service to be placed in the right way, that you expect a kind of service like a, you book a, a, a car, a car in, in a certain area of city, and when you go to to, to pick up your car, you find out that really they don't have the car that you were supposed to pick up. And the only way to, to get the service is you have to wait two hours until they get that, that car ready for you, or you can you can go ahead and rent a, a higher rate car, a bigger car that you that you are really not willing to pay for. So that was really happen when there there's no uh, the right uh, people mindset and the right processes and sometimes systems in place when this, there is no aligned strategy, uh, operation and technology that put together in order to change the customer experience. So, right. so what, what, are, what are we supposed to do as a, as a startup, as a small business, right? In order to grow, we need to hear the voice of the customer. It is a, con, it's a, this is a very, uh, well, no term for uh, operational excellence methodology because all the processes, our processes and um, operation should be based on how can I change the customer experience, right? And in order to do that, I need to know at least how do I measure my service, how I identify the product, the, my, my product, um, I really satisfy the needs of the, my customer. How can I ensure a feedback, a constant feedback loop about how I am really uh, delivering my, my, my service or my projects, right? And, and of course, when we are ready, uh, we are, we, when we reach center level of, of confidence of what we do and we serve our customers well, how can we implement a continuous improvement processes, right? So in order to move forward, I, will, I would like to, launch a quick survey for you to see how you are doing, what is the concept that you have, or how you, what is the knowledge that you have about operational excellence in your business? If our host can help me with this. Absolutely, we're gonna launch it right now. Thank you. Looks like we still have some votes coming in. I'm gonna go ahead and end it right now. All right, I see we have the results now. So that's good. So 75% of the audience, our audience today they think that the business uh, delivers real value to their customers and ensures customer satisfaction. Only 25% is they always deliver, they always are sure that they deliver real value and ensure customer satisfaction. Uh, is that was the only one or we have more? We do have some more, but if you don't mind us launching it a little bit later. Um, okay. If you okay, don't no we move okay. forward. Then. So what are the typical startup problems that we face when we just starting a business? We 
just having like a few customers clients trying to say we're better, right? Usually what happens with the small companies that we don't have the structure processes right in place to measure how can how are we really doing in, in several terms, how good are we serving our customers, um, um, if the resources uh, we're using are enough or maybe we're lacking the right resources to put in place, right? That sometimes can lead to high operation on our head costs, right? And also lack of services, projects of service visibility, right? When you have different teams, technicians, or personal who is on the field delivering the service, but uh, don't, you don't really have a way to make sure that the, what the, the work that you're doing is, is, is the optimal performance or the optimal, uh, or what you're really expecting for and the customer is expecting for. In effective communication across area, when you have different areas, um, um, IT doesn't, uh, doesn't communicate good with uh, logistics or purchasing, or the services department, they don't cooperate together, and they 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 are like in their own ships, each of each all of them, without a, a clarity about what is the objective. So when we were talking about operational excellence, we need to understand the concept. Besides, I don't know if you can see it here. Here is the strategy of the business. Have people here, and here we have operations. And here you have technology, right? Let's say IT. So, how can you integrate these three are the baseline for achieving operational excellence in your business? How does this work? I mean, the strategy, you need to lay out the, your business objectives, right? For short term, like a quarterly, semester, year objectives, uh, your midterm, like five years. Um, also, it would be good if you can, that's the basic, but it would be good also if you can have your 10 long term, like 10 years objectives. And from there, you establish a vision, a shared vision with, with, um, within the company. Right, it's very important that you share your vision in all, in everybody in your team, in your partners, even with your collaborators, external, internal, well, operational, operation. How this work? Like create actionable, actionable points, right? To reduce, to things like reduce costs, right? Um, or the project delivery. How the points, the way you pay when people call, right, the KPIs, key performance indicators, right? In this way, you wanna improve uh, employee performance and the same, at the same time, therefore, the customer experience will be much better, right? So this is, uh, this is goes, of course, with uh, having more accountable leadership, uh, simplify our processes, and, and, the, and then you use the, your technology, you automate. You automate as much as possible, so in the right way, right? Now that you have the right strategy and your process in place, then you can automate the IT. So um, as we were discussing, if you're still with the current situation, most information remains. This is why we, we need, of course, operational excellence, right? Most, infor most information will remain in just a few people's head. We won't have standardized, uh, standardized control check procedures, no alignment with the strategic business goals. You will have uh, increased customer complaints and uh, your cost to your client base can believe you if they find out that they can have a better and cheaper option somewhere else, right? So now we uh, already discussed a little bit about why we need to have some operational excellence in place. What is operational excellence, right? I, I, uh, here, according to 
Jeff Bezos, everybody knows who he is, you know, the Amazon uh, founder and CEO, right? He, he actually based his business with, for many, many years ago in operational excellence. So how can he get better every, every time? So for, so for him, operational excellence involves two concepts, delivering continuous improving the customer experience, that, that's what we're discussing here today, and strengthening, getting more strength and higher levels of productivity, margin, which is money, efficiency, and high turnover of capital growth business, how fast the, 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 you know, the capital goods are moving around the business. So they, they go better every time of that, and in his uh, book of writings, he, um, he every five years uh, apply different uh, levels of getting better and um, serving the customer. So focus mindset, the total cost. So the Amazon success, of course, is based on the, the customer focus that they, they have. But how can they improve the experience of every time? According to the Institute of Operational Excellence, Operational Excellence is a point at which each employee can see the flow of value to the customer and fix the flow before it breaks. Well, this is a, um, the most recognized author about, author about Operational Excellence is Kevin Kuga, Kevin Dugan. So, so, so simply put, what is Operational Excellence? So operational excellence is, is delivering things better, right? Better service, uh, better, better, better process, better experience for the customer, delivering service faster, right? Faster delivery, faster service, generating more results quickly and cheaper, right? Less cost for you and less price for your customer. This is what basically all operational excellence is about. So what we need to do in order to achieve operational excellence? Of course, this is uh, is sometimes not easy, but there are many things that you, you, you can do about it. Uh, you can see Amazon and Starbucks. Of course, I, I put those um, these two companies here because we they are all well known because they focus on in chasing the customer experience. That's, that's why they have become so successful, right? So in order to achieve operational, operational excellence and whatever we do, we need to have effective and efficient processes to deliver value to our customer, increase our value to our customer. We, have, we, we need to have the right tools and techniques, right? And we need to have the right mindset, right? We, have, we need to have the, 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 the customer service mindset uh, and behaviors that we expect for all our collaborators and partners in order to achieve operational excellence. It's, it's not just uh, writing procedures, it's having the mindset and the leadership to make this happen. Um, we need to have the alignment, the right alignment between strategies, our priorities, policies, and decisions making to get this done in, you know, this is not, this is never happens over time, but you, if you have this in place, you can move, you can expect to reach your goals in certain time. So in today's complex business processes, uh, this is more related to IT. I mean, uh, people with IT might be more familiar with this. We have, uh, we can, we have side-loaded, side-loaded, uh, uh, Processes when that so that means isolated communications, you know, one going one direction, one another, and they can crash if they, they don't they don't share things. So processes or things that you do are or might be invisible, right? Also, if we don't have this uh, process, can be very slow, right? If you have too many things in place, you can get the service very slow too. You need to make sure you you know. Uh, doing double work or not getting enough resources to sell better to your customer. And clear procedure when people is the, I, I, find, I find out that in several companies I used to work with that you really, they just hire people or project manager or technician that, and they don't have a clear 
objectives. You don't have clear vision what we're supposed to do. Just go do your work, but not, they don't have the right expectation of how they communicate that to, to the supervisor. Fragmented information, we will have no um, uh, data, uh, one data repository, right? You have information all over in the cloud, in your server, in every in everyone's laptop, right? And this connection about the processes. So we we'll move forward with this. I'm sorry. So what are the steps here? Of course, we can. Uh, do some process standardization. We can you can work on that. You can look at how you're doing in every area of your business and try to standardize as much as you can. At least your key processes that deliver value to your customer. You can do productivity enhancement, right? That means uh, um, making sure that if they, if they, every work you're doing, you do a physical work, you do remote work. Uh, how can you ensure or put the right key, key, uh, indicators, KPIs? to uh, measure this, the productivity of your team members, and the work collaboration tools that we want to talk also a little bit about, right? It's uh, very important to have now, not just a ERP, um, a content system, or a CRM that everybody is managing their clients by work collaboration tools that can integrate many things and put everybody in the same uh, page. So, um, I'm uh, sorry. Okay. So, so we wanna. This is at some of the collaboration tools that we work with, right? I already said only uh, mentioned that we are partnered with Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft. We work actually work with Microsoft 365, Microsoft Teams. We partner with Marsheet and many, and there's many others available. Like you maybe are many maybe you are familiar with some of these, Basecamp, Bright, Trilo, and Asana. Asana is a tool that I recommend if you are just starting up. It's a very easy to use tool. Um, you can use it for your company. You can use it for yourself to so if, even if you are entrepreneur or solopreneur. So we're gonna. We want to discuss a little bit about this tool, Asana, who I am also partnered with. It's a great tool, as I just mentioned it, right? But in order for you to implement a work collaboration tool, what, what you need to do? You need to set up your expectation. We need to make sure why I need the, why, why for I want to accomplish with my, with the tool, right? Many times happen that the business, small business just, just uh, buy or uh, licenses and they don't really know what to do or, they just say your team has to start using it, and but they may use they might be using just a little part of the of the <clears throat> of the all the futures, right? And you know, not really improving operations. And of course, the you buy an um, a work collaboration tool, you you expect to have increased visibility and collaboration. Right, um, you need to make sure that also this I'm spelling here, sorry, but you need to wish you need to make sure that you have the right uh, integration with the tools that you use. Right, um, Asana can integrate with uh, many emails applications like Gmail. You can integrate with Slack, which is a very very popular uh, communication app that so many people use. Jira and you know many other different uh, applications. Of course, the cost. The support and library available. I mean, the help, the, all the training that is implied, the templates, because these tools, when you subscribe for a page ver for, for a paid version, you will have access to uh, many templates that you can use right away in your business. Uh, apps available. In the case of Asana, you can actually download an app. So you can work with Asana in your phone and input data and they will run to the cloud, it will have all over. You can share from the right from the cloud, take pictures, post it there, many things. So what is Asana best use for in startups? Well, of course, streamline the work, remote work, manage the internal external communication, because you can uh, 
you can introduce uh, your your uh, external collaborators, right? You can put your the emails there, and they can receive notifications when you update something in your system, even if they don't know no, no are paying a license for that. Um, share clients and project information. This is very important, so you you don't have to to uh, send the documentation to everyone. Like a key, key of document, a contract, or whatever with this, you can just share it on Asana, and, um, and they will be able to access that information when they're delivering the service for the project. Uh, it's also good for standard project and service processes. In the pay version, you can work with a flow, a reward workflow. So you can put it there and start working on this. And the flow will be transparent for all people in the team, everybody in the team. And of course, to reduce the email overload. Where we want, if we were using a Asana or other work collaboration tool, we expect to reduce all the email threat that we have constantly have. And um, I have that when I was working in, a, in an IT service company, when um, I, I, I told my technicians to stop sending emails all the time, I start putting just information on the system that actually make uh, things, uh, things work much better. Right. Um, so um, I would like to, because of the time, I would like to maybe just show you a little bit about the system, about maybe we can jump right on it. Uh, this is not a workshop, but I just will show you a little bit of the application. Um, right. Um, five tips to use in, in Asana for startups and for teams. You can you can do uh, your team conversation, write a chat there, uh, project status updates. You can use your uh, Asana also for team agendas, team meeting agendas, right? So you can set up your integrations with all these tools, Gmail, Slack, Gira, Salesforce, Teams, several of them. Um, you can also create a share convention for communication and share files, right? Because um, if you want to really use a, a tool in the right way, you, you need to have conventions and a shared language, right? A code, so you, I mean, you, you have to you have to uh, have a specific language to talk about your service. That means you have a service for a city, a specific city, a specific place, a kind of service like construction or elect electric, you need to have a way to codify each service and uh, share these conventions is the, the same talking the same language to everyone right no 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 every, everything informal and for individuals you you can have all your tasks there your inbox you can even receive sometimes for certain emails directly to your inbox in asana right um which is very useful and of course, you can build your daily habits there and, uh, you know, use it for everyday tasks and whatever your personal stuff to do. So we're going to jump into the little demo now. I would like to know if you can see it. Yes, we could see your screen. Okay, and here you have uh, different views. This is a navigation bar, right? And here in the, you have your projects and your tasks, right? In this case, you can create, so from here, I have my task, and you can see I have my, my task here. Um, I have a list of things and things to do. You can have your calendar, so where you can visualize exactly what needs to be done in each, in each day, and your files, right? This is for individuals. In your inbox, you receive information about different projects that we have already due dates, right? You can, this is a very important for portfolios where you can, uh, this is for, uh, uh more advanced pay version that i don't have right now it's very when you, that's what you have for really 
many, many different projects is for, uh, I would say, bigger companies. It's not necessary if you have, uh, if you are a solopreneur or just a small business with 20 or 10 or 20 people. Right, you can have a goal section two. And here is when you have your, when you set up your teams, you can have several, you can set up your different teams. Right, let's say for marketing, for let's say content creation, or um, accounting, okay, whatever. No, and this is all my projects that I'm working with. Right, in when you have the task, and the good thing that you have to know only this, you have the board version, which make it very useful as uh, very similar to Trilo. Right, the Trilo have this uh, Kanban version like you know, boards. Um, your timeline, and you can create in the pay version your, your timeline without even uh, your Changar, your Gantt chart. Right. Um, okay, we are uh, about to reach the time, but I would like to show you just a few features that you can do here. Right here is, let's say you have this, uh, this task here, you can go uh, functional decomposition. You can click on the, on this part or you can just uh, tap X. You will be able to see the, your task. Here are, I, these, these are the files that I'm, we are working with as a team, right? I can add dependencies, right? If you're managing projects here, and the, what, what, what are the tasks of the work needs to be done that depend for this task? The description. I have all the chat here, sharing links. Um, you can uh, actually put this as a milestone, right? For you, then you need to get this done. Um, you can create subtasks, different subtasks, and have different people in charge, due dates, and subtask nodes, including attached files. Um, let's go back to here. Here, I would like to mention also that you can import from your uh, tables and say you create something on Excel. You can actually import your task here, right? You can uh, also uh, do the integration to share your email. So the email information can go directly to a task. Of course, you can export all the information in, in different kind of tables that you will use. So of course, these have many, many. You can you can see your dashboards. You can create different kind of dashboards according to your needs. And the nice thing is that you can integrate with several tools I already discussed, right? So is how can you organize your uh, your different projects? Like you say, I want to create an online course, right? You you see about your contest, like to-do list, things on progress. Um, and actually, you can request to someone on your team to update the status of any task, right? In any task that you are working with, I can say like Tina, right? Oh, the good, the other very, very good thing also, you can duplicate the task. I mean, you can create the templates. You can create one task in one way um, and create templates that you don't need to each time you just copy and it will be your template for all your projects. So if you're using this kind of uh, section for this project, you can use a template that if this, this task will be the same. Let's say you use a functional decomposition or schedule meetings for for all of your projects. Uh, you can just uh, actually uh, duplicate the task and use this on the, your projects that you have on, on the screen. Right, um, I, I believe we are reaching about the time. So I, I would like to just move ahead with the questions and ask, 
for your questions that you may have. Um, uh, before uh, before uh, finishing up this, I would like to mention a couple of things more back on my presentation. So, so I'll, if I get this right, you will you continue? Are you going to continue, or do you want us to go into questions now? No, I think we can go ahead and just yes, right to the questions. I just want to make sure that you're finished with the presentation before I start the questions. Yeah, there yeah, we are. I think we're done. I would just write to answer whatever okay. question you have. Oh, okay. this is just the three steps. I mean, when you, this is uh, something that is a project for we were working with, it calls three steps of transformation. It calls that we perform a um, operational excellence assessment in any company, any specific process that they deliver. We can create a project plan, right? And what resources are needed to to be this, this project. Uh, the final part will be the execution of the software implementation of the of the tool that they need, right? It's according to the needs of the specific. Uh, it's not uh, the same solution for each company. It's, it's what is really fits with, with the organization. So with this, I will thank you for the time. And I just was uh, getting back to you for the questions. All right. Well, thank you for that, Aldo. Um, really appreciate the time you spent to go over this um, important topic with us. Um, one big thing I took away from this was the terminology you used, bigger, faster, cheaper. And for me, how you um, outlined it, that, well, better, faster, cheaper, I'm sorry. So better for me is like better quality, better service. Faster is probably the turnaround time, whether or not you're shipping products and services, um, how you deliver your services, making sure that the customer feels that you are responsive and then ultimately cheaper. And this really, this is where you realize your profits and your, your bottom line, right? So um, to really, close it and, and bring it really back around to your presentation, you were talking about process standardization and product enhancement and all that that matters when you are delivering customer service and the satisfaction, this is where the part comes in. So this is why you introduced this tool, um, which is a collaboration tool that can be used. And, I'll, and I know you mentioned Teams, and I'm going to get to the questions in a, in, in a minute. Um, but when you speak of teams, because we have so many small businesses that are listening, we know that your team may be external. So Aldo, do, if you don't mind telling me or, or, or going, elaborating a little bit about how you would, be, would you be able to use Asana um, with your external either partners, vendors, um, or whoever you want to communicate with as a part of your team, because as small businesses, those are teams or subcontractors or, or people that are independent contractors that are helping us out and they don't belong necessarily to the organization, but you work with them very closely. I'll allow you to answer that question. Uh, thank you, Saigon. It's a great question. Yes, uh, one of two ways. There is a way that you can set up the, uh, the uh, certain emails to go directly to your inbox in Asana. So when you receive a, a customer, they say you already know the email from the customer, right? You can put it, do an integration with, a, so in, in the way that when you receive an email from there, you can get a, a, a task directly created and you will see in, the, in your dashboard as a task in your inbox. So you will be able to assign resources to them, assign a due dates, put the description, the files, or whatever needs to be done. Um, because of course, it's not um, when I mean, you have, let's say, an external part that's working with you, and they don't using actually Asana. Um, um, this is the way actually I would recommend. You know, integrate their emails to to your inbox. Um, Whatever file they are sending, whatever information, just put it in the system to be available for your collaborator, right? So if you can get them, you have the, uh, a continuous relationship with a partner, that means you know that we will keep working with them, working with them, you may ask him 
he may be using Asana. I think they, they will do it because it's very easy to use. That was the reason because when I was working in uh, this uh, parking assistance company, which worked in all over in the States and international, they actually um, have Microsoft Project, but barely use it. So um, uh, technicians, don't know how, nobody, I mean, almost nobody using it in the right way. So I, I decided to move to Asana and, and do a rollout and explain to them how to use it. And, and even we have a couple partners from our partner in Germany, our, 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 our partners in uh, Vegas that they, they jump into Asana just to cooperate better. Okay, thank you so much for addressing that question. I want to get to other questions. So um, if you don't mind, we are going to get into those questions right now. All right, so uh, as a small business, can you use this tool to better measure continuous improvement? Um, as a small business, of course, how can we uh, standardize our procedures? Well, can you repeat the question again? How can you use this tool to better measure continuous improvement? Okay. In that way, you need to create a dashboard, right? In the dashboard, you will be able, you will, your Gantt chart, you will be able to see if you're really at, uh, getting the, the service or the project delivered in time, right? If your resources that are using, uh, are, are enough, they are going over time, over budget. So it's basically that you how you put your system in place to and the reports, right? So you, you need to set up the right status updates. So you they, when you set up the status updates they need to input, they can do it by the phone or in the email and you will get it by the information in Asana. And in that way you will see how you, what you need to change, what processes is really, uh, uh, not working or what uh, team member is not really uh, performing. Okay. Thank you so much for answering that question. Um, and I want to make sure that we answer as many as possible. All right. So the next question is asking how does this tool integrate with email calendar? It shows that you you do you, you integrated it with calendar. I saw when you were looking at the, the calendar. Yes, yes. Um, but it's asking about email calendar and what other integrations can you incorporate? There are many, many integrations about it, but the most popular, of course, you can you can directly, uh, I don't know if I can even show you, if you go to Gmail and you can you can put the ad, ad by URL, if you go to your Gmail, you can add by URL, add calendar, uh, you will find that you will find the Asana integration in Gmail. So you in that way you will have the your Google your Gmail calendar your Google calendar on Asana integrated. So wherever you're placing Asana, you will see it in the and, and back and forward. It's a really good tool and also for Outlook. But for Outlook, it's, it's not that easy. But it's just a a, 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 a quick fix that you can do to raise, to get the your Asana integrated with Outlook also. Okay. There is our integration popular Slack, Jira, Salesforce, which is a CRM that many people use. Uh, it's also integrated with Microsoft Teams. You can, you can use Microsoft Teams. You can actually see your uh, Asana board right there in Microsoft Teams. Okay, great. Thank That's you. That's really cool. Thank you for answering that question. Um, so it sounds like you can use Asana to do your dashboarding and to look at some key performance indicators that you may have to go back to the question for about continuous improvement to measure your company and your performance, whether it's to your customer or it's probably internal if you have employees or external, even like your partners. Um, and also, you can do some automation. Can you can you incorporate automations in that as well? Uh, yes, yes. They can do some automation, like you can uh, 
you can automate like, your project requests and alarms and notifications that you receive automatically in your in your email. And depending on if you are getting, you have more than like hiring employees. I mean, Asana is, is, is being used for many, many even good, big companies, but if you have many data or tables around, there are tools that can work with ta more tables like the Smartsheet that we also work with. They can integrate the tables in um, Excel data in maybe better uh, way, a little more uh, robust in that area. But it's not as user friendly as uh, Asana. Okay, great. Thank you so much. What is the setup process for Asana in terms of time? Mm, it depends. It depends on what you need to do. You want to use it for yourself to keep track of your tasks, to do daily stuff, or you want to work with big projects. But you can do a rollout in Asana for a small business in less than a week. Okay, I have a question that ties right into that. Um, it's asking about if you can give examples of how a small business like an events company, a hair salon, another service-based company like janitorial services or so can really utilize this tool. Because again, the idea, right, is to be able to incorporate these tools so that you have more time. And when you have more time, you give more value. So the client, the, the attendee is asking about how would you use this tool to better serve a service base like an event or um, a hair salon or anything like that? Actually, it, will be, it, will be, it will be perfect for a um, event, uh, small company. We, they, we even have the template for that. Let me, let me try to show you here. Mm -hmm. And we want to get to, to the questions as uh, quickly. We want to answer everyone. Yeah. So, so you can you can actually they have many templates that you can use for a meeting agenda. I mean there is there is another one for events. So for events it's perfect because you can set up your your different um, type of events. They say you have uh, wedding events or uh, parties events, right? And you have your resources is resources for each event. You can set up as a small projects and you can have like sections in each section go with the projects. And if your team members just have the app, it will be a very easy setup for events. For janitorial as well, in the case that you have a supervisor, right? The supervisor, let's say you have like a three, five, four people, but the responsible part is the supervisor. He can go with the with your with his iPhone or any smartphone and, and use the app. To even take a picture of the place, and this go, this they will jump right, right ahead into the as a file into the into the project. Into the, let's say I have I have a, a Marriott hotel and I have um, University Drive uh, building. So in that way, you would check. Okay, this is done. This is not. You you will check the task as done. You know, it will very 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 good tool to use. And I use it myself when I was uh, have to oversee uh, projects uh, co perform uh, different locations at the same time. So they can just update information there and was really, really, really good. Perfect, thank you for answering that. I, I love that it has an app. Of course, apps are so important now. And the fact that you could take a picture that could do a lot. So for the janitorial business that they asked about, they could, what if you're working with hotels or so and you're making the beds and all of that and you have employees and you want to have certain standards and you want to make sure that this um, is repetitive and we keep that going. So you can have your the person take a picture and when it's done, it's done. Uh, that's wonderful. And then events, I could see that as well. You're taking a picture of a room to make sure that, you know, all of this is uh, complete. That's right. And also, let's say, uh, sometimes when you get the, the work done, that's what I find out when I was working in this company, like uh, when they do the, they finish the work, but we don't have the, the formal paperwork. So they just say, they came back and say, I finished the work, but where is your confirmation, right? Your approval, acceptance of the work. So with Asana, we just share right away the 
all the files that we, they need to ask the client to sign. So they are confirming that they approve the work done, you know, and then where you can close the service, close the project or whatever you're doing. So it's, uh, they can even maybe sign on the, on the, on, on the, on the, sometimes they, they run with iPad, so they can sign on the iPad and that way you ensure the work is done and you finish the, the service. Okay, great. Thank you again for that. I have another question. It says, which collaboration tools have you have have allowed the best operational excellence in your company? In my company? Yes. Okay, so it depends on the company, right? It depends because now that I, I am have my my own um, my own business, I don't need with Asana. I'm more than fine. But I serving clients that they really need a tool like Smartsheet because the volume of data that they're working with. Um, Smartsheet uh, can handle a really, uh, really good um, amounts of, and they, um, with Smartsheet you can create um, uh, dashboards very similar to Power BI, if you ever heard about it, right? So it depends. So. For me, it's Asana, the, 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 the tool I'm using. I'm familiar with the other tools as Rike, Trilo, but Asana is the one I'm using right now. That's why I show it. Um, but also, depending on your needs, every company is different. So you need to make sure it's the right solution for you. Okay. So your example is that for you, Asana works because you're a smaller company. However, you have other operational excellence tools that you would use with different businesses, depending on the size and the need. Yes, but, but, but you know that any tool cannot give you operational excellence, right? As I said, it's like a, this triangle here. It's your strategy, your operations, and your IT that goes to there. Thank you for coming back to that. So operation excellence is a three-part thing. It's not just yes. the collaboration part of it. No, no, no. And no. Also, okay, That's great. That's the way Amazon works. Uh -huh. Wonderful, thank you. And I know you had another poll that you have, um, that you wanted it to be launched just to find out you had, um, a question, and if you don't mind, I'll launch it right now. Okay. Uh, You're asking, okay. So the poll is asking if you have written procedures in place um, to update your key process periodically. And I think it really, it goes into what we're talking about as well, because it's not just about using collaborative tools. It's about process and procedures as well. It's about your company's maybe culture and your mission and all your values. I'm going to end the poll right now, and then I'm going to share the results. Yeah, no at all. Yes, that's, what, that's, that's very common in small businesses. They don't have anything written. Right. Right. Um, let me see. So it's a good time to start. You know, this is just uh, ongoing, ongoing work. Some people do it themselves. Some people hire consultants to do that for them. You know, it's a many, many different ways to do it. Okay. Well, wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, um, Aldo, for all of your knowledge. Oh, we have one more question that, that just popped up. Uh, okay, it's asking if the presentation can be shared with with them. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we will uh, share the. We normally share the presentation if you request it, uh, but I could just go ahead and send it out to the group. I normally check with the the presenter as well to make sure that that's okay. So, Aldo, do you mind us sharing the presentation? No, no, at all. That's fine. That's good. Wonderful, because they have my contact information. If any question. They they need any help on that. Very good. Thank you so much again. This has been um, a topic that it's interesting in many ways because a lot of people don't understand or get the concept fully because it has to be explained because it's not, it's one thing that leads to another. And I think the goal here is to really highlight that 
It's that regardless of what size business you are or you're running, you need processes and procedures in place in order to better service or, or, or produce goods or so to your, your ultimate the end result, which is the client. Once the client is happy, then all, of course you'll be happy because that would lead to repeat clients. It would lead to better results, reviews, um, referrals, and then ultimately increase sales and increase, increase profits. So again, thank you for all joining. Thank you all for joining. Uh, my name is Sidoni Naismith, Aldo, Aldo Oreco is the presenter and you can always go to black swan consult black swan.com to find out a little bit more about us and consult black swan that's .com. you can go under programs to check our past programs that we've presented we don't stick with one type of topic we we go through you know, pretty much everything to think about what is it that you need ultimately overall, and we don't just stick to one thing we want to make sure you have enough knowledge. Um, as a business, and you're running your small business because you want to get large, the goal is for you to grow, so we bring you um, experts in their field that would be able to assist. And they have the knowledge base that really they've seen where the products and the services they offer that, that helps um, or even the, the concept. So Aldo here is presenting, was presenting the tool, but ultimately the takeaway here is the entire concept of providing exceptional customer service. And because of that, it leads to increased profits. Aldo, do you have any other words? No, that's great. That's the way. Just uh, chasing the customer experience will take you to the next level. That's the only thing. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us. You get your time back. This is the lunchtime, the webinar free lunchtime series. And we'll see you again. We are working on some other programs for uh, the coming months within April and going forward. So you will hear from me on our programs that we have going. Thank you. And you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.